Hi everyone. There are now an increasing number of application lifecycle management or deployment assistance tools for your Power Platform projects, but still the easiest to use and to understand is simply to export solutions from one environment and deploy them elsewhere, whether that's for further development or for testing or for production deployment. This is a process that works much like saving and opening any Office file, and while there are a few more hurdles of understanding if you're doing something complex, for beginner makers this could be really easy and a great way to keep on top of source controlling and versioning your apps. But have you tried deploying an app that includes a custom connector? Suddenly things get a lot more complex. So let's take a look at deploying a solution that includes a custom connector to a new environment. Let's get familiar with the error you'll see if you don't do it quite right and how you go about resolving that problem so that you can get your app and your connector working in the new environment. So here we are in Power Apps looking at a very, very basic solution. Essentially all I've got is one flow, one connector and the connection reference related to that connector. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at this flow just so you can understand what's going on here. And this is a manually triggered flow. I have this custom connector which is just called get me. Um, I'm going to test this just to show you what it does. And you can see that all this is doing is pulling the me endpoint from graph. So um, about as basic as you can get. So if I jump back into uh, my solution here, if we come to overview, then the way you go about exporting your solution is just with this export button up here. Um, and if we click on this, it asks you to publish your changes. It asks you to check for issues. If you've done all of that, then you can go ahead and you can export your solution either as a managed solution or an unmanaged solution. If it's going to be moved to testing or production, then you want it to be managed. If it's going to be moved to another environment where you want to do further development, then you want to make it unmanaged. And each time it's going to increment the version number by some amount. I hope you're finding the content in this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll know immediately the next time I release a video. So now I've jumped into another environment with another user and I'm going to go ahead and import the solution that I just created. I want you found your file the, uh, the solution you've exported is always going to be a zip file you go ahead and click next well you can see I've got it here so I'm going to click next it's going to ask me to create a connection for my custom connector so I'm going to go ahead and do that and you see I get this error here that I do not have a connector with that ID it doesn't exist um, so I can't go ahead if I come back over here I can refresh this but it will not let me go forward with this import procedure without creating a connection to my custom connector and at this stage I can't do that. So if I jump back into my initial user, the way that I can make this work is by breaking this down into a multi-part process. And so you can see here I've got this solution, the one that includes my flow, uh, which is going to be called custom connector demo. So I'm going to go back to solutions. I'm going to create a new solution. I'm going to call this uh, custom connector demo 2. And I'm going to go ahead and create that. Once I'm in here with a blank solution, I'm going to come up to this add existing. I'm going to go to automation. I'm going to click on custom connector. I'm then going to select the custom connector that I already have in my other solution and I'm going to add that here. So I now have this connector in both solutions and I want it to be in both solutions. So now that I have this connector added into this solution I'm going to come back to overview and I'm going to go ahead and export this solution. And once that's exported I'm going to go ahead and download it and now back in my other environment I'm going to go ahead and import the solution with just the custom connector. Now I'm going to go ahead and import that. So why has that imported this time but it wouldn't import the first time? Well the important aspect is that in my main solution I have the connector, I have the flows but I also have the connection reference that is used by the flow to gain access into that connector. The second solution only has the custom connector. There's no, cu there's no connection reference there. Um, so because there isn't a connection reference, the import procedure isn't looking to set up a connection 
into that custom connector. So this gives me an opportunity to import it and then go through the process of setting that connector up in this environment so that the next time I try to create that connection reference, I'm able to do so. So there we go, our new solution has um, been imported successfully. So we're gonna head into this and just check that we've got what we thought we had. You can see I have my one custom connector. So I can jump into this custom connector and I need to get it set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this redirect URL and then I'm going to jump into edit and I'm gonna go into the security screen and I'm gonna to need to make some changes here. So I'm gonna open a new tab and I'm gonna head over to the Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, I'm gonna to go to my Active Directory. I'm gonna jump down to App Registrations and I'm gonna create a new registration. I'm just gonna call this Graph Connector 1. And I'm gonna drop my redirect URL down here. I'm gonna choose Web, I'm gonna register my app. I'm gonna grab my Client ID from here. Jump back into here and put my client ID, my client ID in here, and then I'm going to come back to Azure. I'm going to create a secret. I'm going to go ahead and copy the value of that secret back over to my connector. Then the last thing I've got to do is just change this resource URL. Then I can go ahead and update my connector. So now that we've done that, we essentially have a solution layer that has our custom connector set up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go back and import our solution again. And this time we're going to choose the original solution that we couldn't import the first time around. You can see again, I'm being asked to create a connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on new connection. And this time, instead of getting an error, I get a create button. I get asked to log in. It tells me the permissions that it wants, and I'm gonna X out of this. I can then refresh. You can see I have my connection here, it allows me to import. Okay, so now that is imported, I'm gonna jump into my first solution. I'm going to uh, come in here and look at, you can see I've got my button here. I'm gonna run into that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit, and I'm gonna test my app. You can see it's got this connection here. I'm gonna run my flow. You can see the flow ran successfully. And it's running in the context of the new user in the new environment. And it's retrieved all the information for Praddy. So there you go. With those extra couple of steps, you're able to import the solution with the custom connector and get it running in your new environment. Now you just need to remember that if you do need to make any changes to the layers of the solution that you put in place before your top layer, then you need to undo those top layer changes in order to remove them if you do need to make that change. So just be aware of that, that sometimes you do need to, to play around with what solutions are actually installed in an environment in order to make changes um, if you are changing something quite radically later on. But outside of that, this solution, so long as you build your custom connector and then just keep deploying changes to the app or the flows itself on top of that, um, then you shouldn't run into too many difficulties with this. Let me know in the comments if you have other approaches to solving this problem, or if there are just other ALM or solution management tips or tricks that you think new makers should know. I hope this has been useful and enjoyable for you, and I hope to see you back here next time. Until then, bye-bye.